first and foremost, Happy New Year. I hope that you had a lovely celebration that was enjoyable and safe. Last year at this time, I had made it a goal. I had made it my New Year's resolution to make the Hope Filled Financial Podcast and to film through the entirety of 2023. I, I think we did a good job putting an episode out every Tuesday last year, and I hope to continue doing that for you this year. I learned a lot in 2023, and I'm excited to share with you everything we have here in 2024. I believe the programming is going to provide you even more value than we did in 2023. Another resolution I had was to start every day when I had my second cup of coffee reading a book for at least 10 minutes. I wanted to see if I could get through a good number of books in 2023. What ended up happening with that, though, is my time ended up getting dedicated elsewhere. It was very easy for me to maintain that habit of reading a book every morning when I was part-time with my day job, and then the other part-time was working on the podcast here in financial coaching. I ended up having to go back full-time temporarily because they needed me at work, and I was willing to be flexible with my schedule, but it meant sacrificing my New Year's resolution of reading a book every morning. I decided that my team at work came first ahead of my habit that I wanted to build with reading. And I think life happens like this for a lot of our New Year's resolutions. We have good intentions going into the new year. We are intentionally wanting to make a positive difference in our lives so that this year can be better and we can be a better version of ourselves. But as you may know, most New Year's resolutions fail. And this fact is backed by science. So what I have today is Derek from Veritasium. He made a video at the beginning of the 2020s about why most New Year's resolutions fail. And I wanted to share with you the lessons that I learned from Derek that have helped me make better New Year's resolutions. Most New Year's resolutions fail. So in this video, I wanna talk about the science of why they fail and how to avoid that so your New Year's resolutions actually succeed. And I want to tell you about three of my New Year's resolutions for 2020. The first one is to stop going to news websites. I find I kill a ton of time by doing that. You and me both. You and me both. Now don't get me wrong, I do think it's important to know what's going on in the world, but I just don't think following the day-to-day -day developments of the news cycle is the way to do that. So instead, I'm going to get one newspaper delivered to my house every week. And that is how I am going to stay informed. Research has shown it is more effective to make resolutions at New Year's than at any other time of the year. In fact, one study found that people who made resolutions on January 1st were 10 times as likely to stick with them six months later than people who made their resolutions at other times of the year. That's really interesting that the New Year's resolutions that are made for January 1st are more likely to succeed, but still most of our New Year's resolutions fail. Is that, is that true? Let's keep watching and find out. But now the bad news. Even a resolution made at New Year's will most likely fail, which is why gyms are packed in January, but they start to clear out by March. Well, research has found that only around 8% of people can stick with their resolutions through the end of the year. That's fascinating. So the stat is only 8% of New Year's resolutions actually persist to the end of the year. And that, in my opinion, is very important for us if we have a New Year's resolution that is financial in nature with an end-of-year goal. So why is this? And how do we avoid that trap? I think it all starts with a misconception. So uh, I think the misconception is that people think that in order to make big changes in their lives, that they have to make some sort of really big effort. I mean, let's say your goal was to run a marathon. You might plan on running 10 kilometers three times a week. That seems kind of proportionate to the end goal, and you might be excited and really motivated to do it for the first few weeks. But at some point, uh, that motivation is going to lag, and running 10K is going to seem too hard, and so you're going to sort of fall back into old habits. I think that's a great lesson that we can learn if we make our financial goals unrealistic something that we can't achieve given our income, given our current situation, well, the odds of us being motivated and having hope that we can achieve them will be diminished. Later in this episode, I'm going to replace the word realistic with the word attainable. Don't forget that. 
The truth is, you're much better off if you pick small targets that you can hit consistently. That's the idea behind James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, uh, which is this idea that if you can get just 1% better every day at something, it will take a minimum amount of effort, but over time, the effects will compound, just like compound interest. I think I've also heard it said that if you want to eat an elephant, the way that you do it is one bite at a time. We can't just immediately jump in and hit our goal first try, especially if we make the goal substantial. And I love the fact that Derek uses compound interest, a financial example, in order to highlight the fact that little tiny baby steps put together can help us achieve a much bigger goal that seems unattainable. When I had the goal of starting the Hope Filled Financial Podcast, I didn't have all the episodes recorded in advance. I recorded one episode at a time, and in order to make it less of a burden on me. I tried to stay about a month ahead on recording so that if I fell behind when life happened, I had a little bit of breathing room to catch back up. The next problem with resolutions is they are too often vague. The most common resolutions that people make are to lose weight, exercise more, and to eat better. The problem is those things are so nondescript that it's hard to know if you're making progress and it's really easy to regress into your old habits. I love this point. In other words, we need to be very specific with what our goal is going to be. For example, Derek mentioned that a common New Year's resolution is to lose weight. So maybe we could be more specific with losing weight by saying, I want to lose five pounds every month, or I want to lose 25 pounds by the end of the year. Next, we're going to see if Derek has any other advice on how to make something more specific and why it's valuable for goal setting. So the science around this says you need to be specific and write down your goals. People who write down their goals are 40% more likely to achieve them. 40% more likely to achieve your goals if you write it down. Okay, I like that. I like that. Let's just right now, if you're listening to this, make it a goal. To today, write down any New Year's resolutions that you may have made yesterday. That is pretty significant just by taking that step of putting pen to paper. And I'm thinking here in this video, you should put your New Year's resolutions in the comments because at least that is taking a step towards committing yourself to a goal for the year. I'm going to extend that challenge and say that if you're listening on a platform that has a comment section and you have a financial goal that you would like to meet, a financial resolution this year, Put it in the comments. I'm hoping that we can inspire other listeners who see the goals that are shared and go, you know, I think I want to do that too. My second New Year's resolution for 2020 is to write in a daily planner every day of this year. In fact, I can be more specific than that. Um, I will write one word in this book each day. Now, I know one word might seem unhelpfully, ridiculously uh, little to write in this book, but I want to commit to this idea of starting small with the idea that if I get in the habit of making the time to at least write down one word on each one of these pages, well, then maybe some days I will write more than one word and that will be helpful in terms of planning my day a little bit. And so hopefully I will be more productive than I would have been otherwise. I think this goes back to the book Derek mentioned, Atomic Habits. I haven't read it, but I've seen some summaries. And one of the big lessons that I've tried to take away from the Atomic Habit and the summary I've seen is to put yourself in proximity, easy proximity of what it is you're trying to achieve or the habit you're trying to build. When I did the book reading, for example, I liked to drink my cup of coffee in my comfy chair in the living room. That's where I liked to sit. So if I wanted to read, a book every day when I had my second cup of coffee, I had to have that book sitting there. Because if I sat down and started drinking my coffee and I didn't know where my book was, I'd have to get up and go find it. That took more effort than just sitting down and, oh, the book's right here. So setting myself up for success by putting myself in proximity to what it is that I wanted to achieve. I think that's similar to what Derek's done here when he says he wants to only write one word in his daily planner per day. And then it's really important to track your progress in an obvious and visual way. Okay, I know I just paused it and that was really short, but this is the third huge point I want us to remember. It's important to be able to track our progress on any resolution or any goal that takes a lot of little baby steps in a visual and obvious way. I've seen people take their 
financial goals and put them on the refrigerator in a way that's incredibly visual. So they can either color in milestones as they reach them, or even take like a paper chain that represents the debt they're trying to pay off and cut off a link every time they pay off, say, $50 or $500 of their debt. That way they can see the chain shrinking as they progress and feel motivated that they are getting closer to their goal every day. And I'm going to use the Everyday Calendar by Simone Yetch, uh, where there's a button for every day of the year and you can push it and the light turns on. And that is really satisfying. So I think this will encourage me to write down a word early in the day so that I can go and uh, turn on the light for that day. What's great about this is it's a very visual way to track my progress and to have it in an obvious place where I can look at it all the time. And I'll put it in the back of shot uh, for some of my videos in 2020 so you guys can see uh, how I'm progressing towards this goal. I think that's a very cool looking calendar. I kind of want one just because it's cool, but we don't need a fancy or expensive calendar in order to visually track our progress. As mentioned before, we could have something as simple as a little paper that we color in, or a paper chain that we cut down, that we place in the kitchen or the living room, or a place that we interact with every day. That's going to be less expensive. It's going to be a more efficient way for you to track your progress. So the third major problem with New Year's resolutions is that people seem to think it's about having more willpower or motivation, being able to resist temptation better. But willpower is a finite resource, and it can be depleted, there are going to be some bad days, and that is when you're going to relapse. So relying on willpower is not an effective strategy. And research has shown that people who have better self-control actually just have to exercise it less. And the way they're able to do that is by structuring their environments so they don't have to exercise their willpower. I think this is a great point that Derek makes. We are structured in our brains to take the path of least resistance. This is why we kind of resist work. And I really like Derek's point that willpower is a finite resource. And if we want to achieve something, we need to treat our willpower like it's a finite resource by reducing the willpower that's required to achieve the goal. I think putting the book next to my chair where I drink my coffee in the morning was an excellent way of reducing the willpower that was required to engage with the habit that I wanted to build. Let's shift our focus on taking this proximity principle of sorts and applying it to our personal financial goals or our personal financial New Year's resolutions. If we have a place where we write down our goals, our financial goals, we need to have it located where we're going to be seeing it regularly. If you have it written on a piece of paper, well, maybe you need that on the refrigerator or taped to the wall or a corkboard next to your desk where you do your work. Or if you're like me and you like to keep all of your financial information in a spreadsheet or some sort of computer program, maybe you need to set that computer program or that spreadsheet to open up when your computer boots up so that it's always an open window that pops up and it reminds you, hi, I exist. Sometimes I'm going to need some attention. Are you on track? Now, before we move on, I didn't play the full video for you that Derek made as if you enjoyed his work and you want to see the rest of what his video had to say, I've linked it in the description below. I think the Veritasium channel has done amazing work to educate all of society on science and ways that we can better our lives. Derek's an amazing educator, probably one of the best that's ever graced the internet. And with that, we're going to move on with Derek's wisdom into today's main topic.